Hello, hi, how's it going? In this video, um, we're just gonna have a little look at buffers. What are buffers? How do they work? We're probably used to buffers from um, YouTube, right? Or any video streaming service. So we have a video and we go to play it, but it just doesn't work. It needs to buffer. It needs to load some data. Well, what is that data? Every one of these little frames um, is a buffer. It holds data, which will be presented on the screen, some audio as well as some uh, visual data. Okay, so how does this work when we're playing a game? Well, we have our computer, we're ready to go, and um, the computer needs to present um, information on the screen, it needs to draw. But it can't just be working with the memory that it's drawing directly on the screen, otherwise it will cause some artifacts. It might be updating things as it presents them on the screen. Um, to get over this, we have um, what's called a double buffer system, where one set of data is uh, drawn to by the computer, and the other set of data is presented to the screen. Um, this system is called uh, swapping. In Vulkan, it's called a swap chain. But what data is stored and drawn on the screen? Well, typically, this is what's called a frame buffer. This consists of a color buffer, which is an array of pixels. Every pixel is represented with a 32-bit floating point uh, number, where the first byte is red, next byte is green, blue, and alpha, so four bytes. And then we have a depth buffer and a stencil buffer. The depth buffer is used to determine um, which fragments should be drawn on top of other fragments to get things drawing accurately. And the stencil buffer is used to pass in additional miscellaneous details for creative rendering and such. Each of these is a 32-bit floating point number as well, where the first 24 bits is reserved for the depth and the next eight bits is reserved for the stencil information. Altogether, the union of these two objects makes what's called a frame buffer. How is this information drawn on the screen? Well, the color buffer is pretty self-explanatory. The stencil buffer is so general that you can go wild with it, really the sky's the limit. One interesting um, aspect is the depth buffer. So let's say we're drawing a scene and um, well, we're human, so we know to draw things which are close um, on top of things which are far away. But the computer doesn't know. For instance, in this scene here, by the internal order of the objects, we may be drawing the sphere first, and then the pyramid, and then the cube, and then the cylinder. So we start with the sphere, and we draw every pixel on the screen. We store the color value from the color buffer, as well as the depth value. Then we go ahead and we go to draw the pyramid. And most of those pixels can go straight on the screen as usual. But then we have the corner of the pyramid, which interacts with the sphere. So we compare the depth value, which is being written there to the depth value, which is already there. And in this case, the depth value of the sphere, frag uh, sorry, the pyramid fragments is lower. So it overwrites the previously drawn fragment. Then it overwrites the depth value there. Uh, if in future we want to draw something. So here we are, we're drawing the cube and everything's fine. Then we have a comparison between some pixels um, on the pyramid, the depth value of the cube pixels are lower, so they are drawn. Then we go to draw the cylinder and the fragment values there, their depth is actually higher than the existing fragment. So those are discarded, those are not drawn to the screen. And that's it, that's how a depth buffer, buffer works. So hopefully you had fun and that will be it for now. All right, have fun, bye.